Moose is in the house in Studio B. We've had, I think we've had you in here before, but it's been a minute, right? Mm, that might be my first time. Actually. Might be the first time. Okay, yeah. here we go. First time for everything. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Great to have you. Uh, congratulations you. on the win against Pepperdine, 19-9. and nine. What did it take for the, the team to get up for that game, given how well Gonzaga went mm -hmm. until the very end? Yeah, like, for sure it was super, like, emotional, you know, like, after we lost that game. Like, because if we had it and we just gave it away, you know. But the next day, coach just come and talk to us and say, we, we can grow, you know. Like, we're going to let that game affect us. You have to motivate us, you know. And that's how we just say, okay, let's just forget about that. It was super, even the beginning of the game against Paper Time. And you can see everybody was not super happy, super emotional, but we just have to keep fighting and find a way to win. And I feel like that's what we did. You can, you can learn a lot in a defeat, yes. especially a crushing one. Oh, yeah. uh, let's go back to Gonzaga for a moment. In the last couple of minutes, you've seen the film, you've talked about it and all that stuff. Can you still believe it happened? I mean, you had them, and, nah, and then they got you. Serious. But it was one thing Coach also talked about. He said, like, we just have to be present, you know. I feel like all, all we, we thought we won, you know. We were up for, and we got a ball in our position. We thought we already won, you know. And there was a couple of defense mistakes as and what we did, you know. Like, we just have to stay present and just, like, taking care of offense, defense, you know, at the same time, you know. So you go into the locker room after the game. Yeah. And uh, take us in there. What was that like? It was, it was actually really bad, you know, like, a lot of, a lot of my teammates was crying, you know. It's just like, everybody was just so mad. Nobody want to talk to each other, you know. And coach was... Super fresh everywhere, you can even see it, you know. But he talked to us. He just like tried to motivate us, even you know, he was super emotional and super mad at the same time. But he tried to stay positive, you know. So we can he said because like we're gonna play against a big team Saturday, you know. So we just gotta forget about that and be ready for the next. Was that hard? And that was super hard for sure. It was super hard, yeah. But you guys got up for uh, Pepperdine, which is a good young team. They've got yeah. some real length. They got a lottery pick potentially in, in yeah. Maxwell Lewis. They got some height. Um, yet you guys come out and play a nice game. Obviously, second half was 50 plus for both teams, which is yeah. crazy. But um, now you have a, a big week coming up. Now that yes. you're six games into league play, what have you kind of learned about yourself and this team so far at, at four and two in league? Hmm. And I feel like. I really like do believe on my team, you know, because like every game is different, you know. You just gotta come and sh you cannot just come and don't show up, you know. I feel like this league is super hard. If you come show up, you will win. But if you don't, you will lose for sure, you know. Like I feel like we just like what I said before. We just have to be present, you know, and and focus like everything. Like don't just focus like what's gonna happen. Just be present, like focus on offense and after good play defense, you know. I feel like that's going to help us win a lot of games in the league. In our game prep Saturday, uh, Mark Pope told us, uh, we talked about defense, and that's the identity, really, of this team. Mm -hmm. But he raved about how you and Atiki, Ali Atiki, have improved your defense from last year to this year tremendously. Mm -hmm. What are you doing that's making you a better defender? Now, Coach, yeah, Coach been challenging me a lot, you know, because he said he really don't want me to stand in the in the block, like seven, seven foot five, you know, he's always make a joke, you know. <laughs> he say, Fuss, you have to be able to guard like a guard, you know. And all the coaches was talking to me about it. Just, I have to challenge myself to be able to move my foot, be able to guard one through five, you know. And that's, you guys have been doing that more, switching yeah. one through five. Yeah, we've been doing that a lot. I feel like that been helping our, our team a lot, you know, because we don't have to do so many rotation, you know, like which, which has been super helpful there. Yeah. And that's why we see Jan Zedek getting in the post on Dallin a couple times. Oh, yeah, like, that was... <laughs> hey, sometimes that's what happens, right? Yeah, sometimes that's what happened, you know. And defensively, this team was, uh, you know, up to 23rd on Saturday, 30th right now. At the oh. beginning of the year, Mark Pope said, hey, this is going to be our identity. BYU typically has been more offensive, right, and then yes. some defense. Mm -hmm. um, how has this team been able to get to that point where you're a top 30 defense in the country? I feel like because we actually know we're a good offense team, but it's just a little way, you know, sometimes, you know. And I feel like if we're not always consistent on offense, we have to be great on defense, you know. I feel like that's super helpful because, say, if you can stop them, like if they stop you, if you won't score, like, 
let's come and do the same thing, challenge ourselves. So our guy, that one scored on us too, you know. When you need a break, a tiki comes in. Uh -huh. How impressed are you with the development of his game? No, I really, I really love his game, you know, like, even last summer, he's always, he was always in the gym, you know, whenever you come, you see him, or after practice, he just like keep, like you can just see it, he just want to get better every time, you know, and he's, he's working super hard about it, you know, I'm super, I'm super excited and happy for him. At some point, you're going to play together? I know it's it's him or you uh -huh. because there's two bigs on the there team. Two big, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if we got one more big, yeah, me and Atiri will be playing together a lot, you know. That'd be a f so I can be able to play for a little bit, you know. Hey, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we've talked about this before, but um, at six six uh, with a seven two wingspan, you're unique uh, physically in that you're not a six ten guy playing the five. You're a six six guy playing the f the four, who's really playing the five. Yeah. What's it like every night to go up against a guy that's 6'9", 6'10"? Yet Mark Pope corrected us one time and said, eh, you need to think of him as a 7'2 guy with that wingspan. Oh, <laughs> no, I think so. It's because I'm kind of like getting used to now, you know, because I say, oh, whoever I'm going to get is going to be at least 6'10 or over, you know. I say, I for sure I have to play physical, you know, because don't let them catch easy, you know, because they have a height advantage, but I just have to use my strength, you know, like, to make the defense a little bit harder on them, you know. It's just it's just been uh, challenging you to grow. I guess last year you get thrown into the mix early. Yes. You're constantly going up against it. I, I guess have you felt like this has made you grow the last no. two years? These couple of challenges. Yeah, actually make me grow a lot because coach told me after it was last year. I, actually, uh, coach said, "Fush, you gotta grow fast," you know, because he was just I was just still trying to figure it out, you know. But I was still doubting on myself a little bit, you know. But after me and coach got tagged, I said, okay, just, I just got to start playing, you know. Like, believe myself and just start playing. When you get the ball down in the low post, there's a lot of head fakes. Are you sizing up the guy? You just need him to get off balance just a little bit before yeah. you go around him or, or over the top? Mm -hmm. Or are you just going, if I go right up, he's going to swap my shot? What's the uh, strategy? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I'm not scared if they block my shot, you know, because... <laughs> I'm more like, you know, I'm just reading them what they're going to do exactly, you know. Because I tell you, like, for sure they're taller than me, you know. I just got to be a little bit smarter, you know. I can, Because if you come to jumping counters, I might win, but I know always, you know. I just have to be able to figure them out, like, keep on thinking them. I know for sure they're going to jump. <laughs> First one, second one, yeah, for sure they're going to jump, and I can be able to go to the other side and just score, you know. And the nature of your game is very physical. You like contact. You get to the free throw line a lot. Since mm -hmm. December 10th, you're 48 of 53 from the foul line. You're the best free throw shooter on the team. Oh. And there's not many centers in college basketball who are the best free throw shooters mm -hmm. on the team. Why are those shots so important to you? And how much time do you spend in the gym shooting free throws? And I actually do spend a lot of time shooting free throws, especially with Coach, Coach Nick and Coach Nick, Coach Nick Robinson mm -hmm. and Mark Pope, you know. Because I was struggling a little bit, like putting my hand up. Mark Pops told me, like, if you can put your elbow a little bit higher, your free throw gonna be nice, you know. That's what I've been working on. And every day I just stand in the free throw line, just shoot and shoot until I feel good, you know. I'm gonna use that at the free throw line because once once you finish playing in, uh, you know, uh, high school or whatever at our level, uh -huh. the free throw gets you in the game. That's the most important shot, so I got to use that. That's oh, awesome. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay, um, we're talking to Foos here on BYU Sports Nation. Huge week coming up uh, at Santa Clara. They're a really good team. At San Francisco, they're good too. They've struggled in league, but this is a huge road trip. Uh, how is the team going to prepare for what looks like one of the biggest road trips of the season? Oh, uh, for sure. We got like film right now, you know. We're going to go watch film, but this is like two of the best teams, you know, like Santa Clara. There, we lost against them last year. It was super. That was super disappointing last year, you know. That was a tough week. That was kind of super, uh, tough the season year, unwound there a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that's what we really like went down last year, you know. Mm -hmm. And we know who, who they are, you know. We just gotta be really like, just gotta come punch them this year, you know. Like, we're gonna let them punch us first, you know, before we react, you know. Those two teams, you know, they're super good. We just have to be really like, follow all the de defenses assignment, you know, like, just be there, what you have to do, you know, like, no. There's going to be mistake, but make sure, like, it's, it's not always, you know, so we can be able to beat those teams. You look further down the road. February 11th, you go to Spokane. Do you feel uh, last week gave you the blueprint 
to go up there and beat the Zags in the rematch? No, yeah, because that, <laughs> I talked to that a little bit, you know, because I say we can beat those Zags, you know, like last week I was super confident about it, we're going to beat them, you know, but it just come down to some mistake, but against Spokane, yeah, it's going to be nice there. Uh, a week or two ago, we had uh, Mix Ramanis from the men's volleyball team in. He's Lutheran, and I asked him what it's like being Lutheran at BYU. Mm -hmm. What's it like being a Muslim at BYU? You're one of the unique athletes in the history here that is yeah. Muslim. No, it's, it's actually super good, you know, because I feel like there is a lot of similarity, you know. Like, I feel like I'm, like, everybody is respecting me with my belief, you know. Like, it's just like, I'm super happy to be here, you know. Like, I never feel like someone is treating me because I'm, I'm practicing different religion, you know. I took a Muslim, uh, uh, Islam in the gospel class, and uh, I found uh, so many similarities between them that I, I didn't know before. It was yeah, great. So. Yeah, it was a lot of similarity. Yeah. It's awesome, man. Super cool. When you make a big play and the crowd goes, foosh, you know they're not booing you, right? Did nah. someone have to say, hey? No, nah, yeah. <laughs> nah, no, it's one of the sup, sup, it's one of the amazing things ever, you know. Like all the crowd is screaming your name. It's just like amazing. It's did you, a, did you think at first feeling. they were booing? No, actually, I never thought that because you never thought. Yeah, a couple That's of black great. people come talk to me and I say, just, you know, we're not booing you. I say, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just wanted to make that very clear. Yeah, it's a strong vowel. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, good awesome. luck this week. Thank uh, you. Huge road trip, and we appreciate the time, man. Thank you. I appreciate you guys. Thank you, Foos. Right, the great Foos.